سلام دوستای عزیز خوش آمدین برنامه را واقعا نمی فهمم که در انگلیسی پیش ببریم یا به زبان فارسی اما فکر کنم در مجموع در انگلیسی بهتر خواد بود باز هم هر دوستایی که میخوان به هر زبان که صحبت کنن کدام مشکل نیست اما انگلیسی به خاطر ازی که در مجموع میخوایم که مردم خارجی از حالت افغانستان آگاه شوند دیگه آقای رشاد جان خوش آمدین البته تشکر ازی که ای دعوت ما را قبول کردین و ما واقعا خوشحال هستیم که شما برای یک, یک جوان پر احساس اینجا امرای ما هستند سلام رو میجان با ما از شما باید تشکری کنم که شما استادست در این وقت که وطن ما ضرورت داره مردم مثل خود تواره که آواز بلند کنه روشنی پرده و مثل که شما مو کار کرده و دیده و سیوان بسیار کپ بسیار مهم بود شکر از کار کردین توجه دنیا را گرفتین که مردم ما چی کار داره چی ضرورت داره بازم تشکر نام ما رشاد باکسنگیز ما یک نویسنده افغان امریکن هستم که در امریکا در برچینیا زندگی میکنم کمتون شیر شایبی نوشته میکنم به زبان انگلیسی و همین به بسیار وقت نزدیک این کتاب کپت بین کابل ایران پابلش کردیم اگر فرسی من قوی نیست من به وقتی دوستای از این رامی جان خودت می فامی من امریکا بسته دیگر از این اول شروع کردیم و از افغانستان در پاکستان مسافر شدیم دیگر خاطر که فرسی رو خوب نیست اما باز هم به ما کمک مادر جان استاد فارسی بود در افغانستان و هم کمک هم شیر شایری کرده شد و ما تکرار میکرد که زبان مادری تا نکن نکنیم نموز تک همه پریاد دارم سو باز هم اونوی باشی اگر تشکر روزید رشد جان پیپل ناو وی وی سویچ تو انگلیش ام ناوان So uh, first of all, we are a uh, democratic people of Afghanistan here in Belgium, and I'm here <laughs> with my companions, uh, Mr. Samir and uh, Khanum Marwa. So uh, can you introduce yourself, please, for people who are here uh, so they can know uh, what we are doing here? Yes, uh, my name is Samir Mahmoud. It has been 15 years that we are living in Belgium with my wife and two kids. And uh, I am working as a translator, interpreter uh, from Pashto Dari to English and to French. Uh, basically, uh, it is my job, but uh, actually uh, my heart beats for my country. And that is why we are doing uh, some actions and uh, wanting to uh, raise our voice uh, and uh, to understand, to show what is happening inside Afghanistan. Thank you very much. Salam Rishad Jan, uh, I am uh, Marwa Mahbub, the wife of Samir Mahbub, uh, who are working uh, the same as me. Uh, I work in a uh, refugee center in Belgium, and uh, we just uh, want to raise our voices for the democracy of Afghanistan. And uh, we welcome you. And thanks for your time for giving us. Yes, salam bare Zulfia John Kahar. Rishad John Harba Ms. Sangi, Shumobisar Hoshamad in the Barnamim Shaw, Wayak Tashakur Hos Mekonum, Bakazaki Barnamara, Amohangi Kaman or Kadama Druskadan, or in John Samazai. So about the uh, occupation of the Afghan embassy in Brussels, uh, which happened just uh, at the beginning of, uh, let's say, last week. <clears throat> This week is almost finished. So uh, it was on uh, Monday morning here in Brussels. Well, the basic idea was that we do not recognize the terrorist government of the Taliban in Afghanistan and uh, that we also <clears throat> fully support by all means the resistance of Afghan people abroad or uh, in Afghanistan itself. So we had some aims, which is on the screen you can see, and our slogan was we resist to exist because as you saw the genocides going on in Afghanistan about the um, Hazara ethnicity and, and now we also see the same thing happening in Panjshir and so on. So uh, that's why we resist to exist because it's an existential 
uh, question. It's an existential problem, not only uh, physical, but also our culture, uh, the language of Farsi, which is at risk not right now. So our aims were like, first of all, do not recognize the government of the Taliban. This message is mainly for the um, international uh, authorities, governments, uh, and then secondly, also uh, violence against Afghan women and the extermination of Hazaras, Tajiks, and other minority or other ethnicity um, groups, uh, and also the family reunification for Afghans abroad. So that basically means that families who are abroad, uh, let's say in, uh, in America, or let's say in Western countries in general, will, will have the possibility to help their family by themselves. But just because legally this is not possible, there's no way to, to go and, and support them, uh, for example, the, uh, the airport of Kabul, for example, uh, which was shut down after when Americans uh, returned back to America. And also the last point was uh, recognizing the asylum protection for Afghans. So this is really abroad everywhere people, uh, Afghans living, uh, because uh, people, they came here, they, they made it so far, let's say, uh, and now they are just in an illegal situation, like in a frozen case, no one knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Um, so that's why these five points. Uh, but uh, of course, because of these actions in Brussels, because of the occupation of the embassy, which was uh, a political action, and we were really clear about our message, um, just to uh, get the voice out of Afghans around the world, because we see uh, since the Taliban came to Afghanistan, like the, the ambassadors around the world, they're just there. We don't know what they are doing <clears throat> because uh, basically there's no official government. So uh, it means there is nothing. They don't have any responsibility anymore. So what to do with that? So for us, just to get this voice out and Brussels, which is capital city, uh, like from a political point of view, uh, so we thought this is really the, the best place to do it. So that's how we came to that idea. That's why we did it. And this is really uh, to support the resistance in Afghanistan and also to bring the voice of Afghans around the, the globe. Uh, so we are really happy with the results because after that, there was so much media attention. Of course, some people had some uh, negative opinion about it, but that is always when you have um, a political position to take. Uh, you always have to deal with the opposition. But anyways, uh, that's how we came to you, uh, Mr. Rashad. Um, and, and I'm really happy because uh, now we are here and we can talk about, about your book, which you have written. I just go to the book cover. Uh, this really got my attention, uh, to be honest, like Captive and Cobble. Uh, so now, please, let's start with the cover because the, the title and, and the image I see here, um, that really got the attention. So let's start from in out, <laughs> or from out in, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> Roman John, uh, I just wanted to say honestly, uh, I am very uh, happy and surprised that you guys thought about uh, you, what you guys did in that embassy. Uh, most of us, what we were busy with was just a regular weekend, which was, you know, like you had said, uh, at that time, uh, a lot of political figures would be at their homes, comfortably sitting and enjoying their life. They wouldn't even turn on the news channel. So that's what most of us um, uh, Afghan Americans or, or Afghan Europeans or Afghan Australians, any one of us who were putting these protests, that's what we were busy with. We were putting protests day and night, you know, uh, from uh, men to women to children, every one of us were out there who have a feeling for our country. So we were doing this, and, and, and in return, we felt like no one's hearing our voices, you know? So what you guys did, that definitely jumped in the news. That definitely made a headline. But like you had said, your goal was to take it further and uh, hopefully... Uh, get more results, but inshallah, maybe in the future we can definitely revisit that. Yeah, so yeah. again, thank you guys for what you did. It takes courage, honestly, to take that type of action. So again, thank you for that. And like I said, knowing that we live in Western world, it's, it's totally different than living back home. 
when you take these type of actions to go inside the embassy, that takes a lot of guts, that takes bravery, that is by itself, Muhammad, you know, you, uh, you're just putting yourself out there in the front lines, not worrying about your family, your job, your, your uh, place of residency. They could definitely, you know, have taken this to a bigger level, which you said that that's what the ambassador did, called the police, which she wasn't even allowed. So again, we have to acknowledge that and thank you guys for, you know, your bravery. Well, with all pleasure, but let's come back to your book. So please uh, tell me what is this title about, Captive in Kabul? It, it brings some associations in my head, but can you please help me out? <laughs> uh, absolutely. So this book, Captive in Kabul, is... Uh, probably about 90% of all Afghans uh, around the world or currently Afghans that are living in Afghanistan is their life story right here. Uh, sure, this might be a family story right here in this book, but like I said, any one of us reading this or any American reading this who wants to know what Afghans are living through today, what they live through 20 years ago with the first takeover of Taliban and what they will be living through for the future, this is the book, unless action is taken. And this is why I wrote, I wrote this book. The plan for this book was supposed to be uh, getting published possibly in like next five to eight months. But with the collapse of Afghanistan, my team pushed me to know whatever it is, we gotta get this out right now. Because people need to hear our voices. We are lucky, we are fortunate to live in, uh, you know, Western world such as Europe, Australia, uh, America, wherever it is. But what about those people? They're no different than you and me. There are 10 other Rashad sitting in Afghanistan. There are 10 other Khanum Marwa sitting in Afghanistan. There are 10 other Samir John, Ramin John, like yourself, sitting in Afghanistan. Same language, same culture, same, uh, same beliefs, same everything, but they don't have a voice. So we have a voice. We have a responsibility. What we have to do is we have to show the world what we went through, what we're going through, and what people are currently going through, such as uh, the people, as you had said, the Hazara people, they're our brothers. There's no difference between them and us, such as Pineshir people. And currently, it's not just Pineshir, they're doing it all over Afghanistan, Iraq, Pineshir, wherever it is. As long as you don't fall in their ideology, they'll take you. They'll take you down and they'll try to destroy your culture, heritage, uh, and whatever it is that they want to your language, especially. So that's what motivated me to write this book. But when I when we first came to America, it was literally right after 9-11. So we were being terrorized in Afghanistan. That's why we left our homeland, uh, packed whatever we had, went to Pakistan. From there, we came to America. Uh, we were being terrorized there. Then we came to America. All of a sudden, people are calling us terrorists which is totally, uh, totally our biggest fear. Being terrorized, Taliban come to another country, someone looks at you, where are you from? Afghanistan, how do you look? You look brown? Okay, you must be a terrorist. You are the same people as the Taliban. No, we hate the Taliban, we're against the Taliban. But when we came here, that's what we were getting, day and night in schools, bullying and all that. And sorry, Mr. Rashad, that had nothing to do with uh, with the Taliban, the 9-11 has yeah. nothing to do with uh, right. Afghanistan, let's say, because it yeah. was very obvious that there was no Afghan involved no. in that action. No. So still, no. I, you know, like how, how people, or, I, or maybe I should say the American media, how they came to that idea. It, it, it looks like a pre-planned... Uh, it's all set up, my brother. Yes, yes, you have a great point. There was no Afghans that were, like you have said, involved in that 9-11. But then they say that, okay, 9-11 happened. Let's call a war on terror and let's go out there and stop it. So they choose the most weakest, vulnerable country who was going through uh, the biggest struggle. Finally, the first resistance were capturing most of Afghanistan. Then these people decide to the whole world goes and invade Afghanistan in the name of war on terror in the name of help. 20 years passed, nothing happened. They bring puppet presidents such as Karzai, such as Bani, who never won any election. They handed the country. And at the end, when they leave, no Afghan is sitting in that Qatar peace treaty 
and back again, they give the country to the same people that they were fighting called the terrorist Taliban. They give them that, but they don't just give them the country. They give them 90 uh, billion worth of weapons. So these Taliban nowadays are a lot stronger thanks to the world for giving them all that stuff. And now they're calling us again. Oh, why should we help out those people? They need to fight their own wars. Yes. We will have to fight our own wars, but why are you giving the enemy, the terrorists, the so-called terrorist people, the weapons? So, like I said, that's what motivated me to write this book. And my, our biggest goal is to open the eyes of the world, to show the world that just because we might be a little bit darker in skin, we might be brown, we might eat different food, we might pray a little bit different, we might speak a different language. That doesn't mean that we don't go through the same things as what you guys go through in daily lives. We go through heartbreaks. We go through uh, hardship. Our, our, our fathers, men, uh, get up during the day, go outside, try to provide food for his family. Our mothers go through the same thing as your mothers do. At the end of the day, the human in us is exactly the same. It's just we fell in different geography and you guys fell in different. So that is literally the point of this book, to open eyes so then we can open hearts. And once hearts open, people will see that there's no difference between Ahmad and Mahmoud, Mike and Bill. We're all the same. Yes. We all, 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 all one thing, peace. Sorry, go ahead. Okay, Mr. Rashad, so... Uh, let's let's talk um, more about your personal experience because after all that's what you got here with this book uh, as i yes. know uh, the conversation we had uh, before so can you please explain a bit uh, and give some examples of your personal life and so let's say uh, there was 911 and you arrived to america so can you explain a bit about that Absolutely. So how like was I said, life at that time? I'm sorry, go ahead. How, how was life that time in America? Oh, for- absolutely. Absolutely. So like I had said, we were living in Afghanistan. My father was uh, a prominent uh, figure. Our life was good. My mother was a, a Farsi teacher. So like I said, our life was good. These were open-minded people, hardworking people, providing, you know, uh, honest living. Everything was good. Then Afghanistan obviously collapsed. And then my father got kidnapped, like many other open-minded men from that country when the first Taliban took over happened. And then after that, my mom was the only one that was out there. She was the man and the woman of the house. So we had to flee, and we fled to Pakistan while living in Pakistan after a couple of years, but in a very short amount of time, uh, the world opened up their doors to refugees, you know, which is another funny thing. They come burn your house and then they say, we're going to help you out, take two of you out of this misery. What about the rest of my country? What about them? So we came to America literally right after 9-11 and we didn't speak English. To us, their food was different, which now their food is our food. Their language was different. And currently I'm speaking in English. English has become my first language. You know, and their culture and everything was different. And now we have taken everything and it's become part of us. And whether you're in Europe, Australia, wherever you are, you guys can relate to this, that once we come to somewhere, we become part of it, you know. Uh, So we came here and uh, I I had started, I believe I was in the first grade uh, and my other siblings also in school. And we were the third Afghan family in that city. And every day, and I'm very sure hearing stories. Was it? Uh, I was in first grade. Okay. Yeah. And I'm sure. uh, Sorry? Just that people have an idea about. Oh, yeah. I was on first grade. You know, I started school here. And like I said, speaking with other people around the country, they they, they had 99% of them had the same story. Some of them that weren't even born back home, they were born here. The moment the world found out they're Afghan or they, they looked a little bit brown. We all got picked. Oh, you guys are terrorists. Every year when 9-11 happened, with, uh, 9/11 anniversary would come up, everybody would pick on us. Oh, you guys did this. You guys did this. A lot of people that I grew up with didn't even know they were kids, you know, as that young. When it would come that time, they would, you know, the next day bully us. They would call us names, fight with us. 
I know a, a cousin of mine who used to live in Chicago. He got beat up so bad that they took him to hospital. Poor kid didn't even speak English. And he's getting back home. The Taliban were beating him. He comes to America thinking I'm going to get a safe life. These people are beating him for the actions of the so-called Al-Qaeda who are not even associated with Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. So life was not easy, my friend. Life was not easy at all when we first came to this country. And still to this day, when 9-11 happens, American people still, you know, hold this grudge that these Afghans, these brown people did it. So literally, that is the biggest point that I wanted to write this book about, to show the world, no, we didn't do it. And look, that we're also humans and we are going through the same struggles as you are. Yeah, and that's very important that we talk about this now because, you know, uh, we see like we, the democratic people of Afghanistan here in Belgium, we really see this a, as a turning point in the Afghan history, especially the awareness that young people are having right now because of the social media and et cetera. So they are getting more and more involved. Uh, they, they are becoming more conscious about what's going on. So that's why this was so important for us to invite you here um, and, and talk about it because this is really a voice. Writing a book is really not easy. I do understand that. And I'm sure you have put so much time and energy to bring all those hard memories, let's say, uh, together and, and to bundle them just to be the voice of the, the young Afghan Afghans around the world today. So thank you so much for that. Uh, Mr. Rashad, I, I just read a bit of your book, uh, just to be honest, um, and I'm really going to um, really buy a physical copy for myself because I love reading books. Um, so what I read is just the, the first uh, five pages uh, I could reach. Uh, can you please read the first page for us? Uh, because the beginning, how it starts is really interesting, and I will explain why it is so interesting. So after you finish the, the reading. Just Absolutely. Absolutely, Roman John. So the first chapter is called The Panic, and that's where everything, the story, the settings, and everything is drawn. You know, when they first took over Kabul, they said they, were, they weren't going to harm anyone that everyone was going to continue living their lives as they were before. It didn't matter whether you were a civilian or government personnel, because in the end, we're all Afghans. So this day, that's what we believe from each other, that we're all Afghans. Exactly. So, let me get that. Uh, that's why most of us decided to stay and work with them, even though we didn't share their belief system, but now, now more and more of them are coming from cities all over the countries, from the mountains and villages. Let me tell you, these ones are not honoring those words at all. They are different. For God's sake, they are destroying state buildings, offices, and even smallest things such as a pen. Saying that the pen has been touched by the hands of communist infidels. Can you believe that? Yeah, they had their jihad and won. But what kind of jihad is this? Jihad against your own country, jihad against your own people, jihad against the pen? That is not jihad. Or it's it or or, or was ever meant to be. So basically, I, I just read the first paragraph, and, and that just shows that it's a conversation between a mother and a father, and the main character's name is Nasar. He's just observing everything for the first time. He hears the word jihad and he doesn't know it. A four or five year old doesn't know it, doesn't even mean that he is from Afghanistan, uh, Iran, Arabistan, anywhere. They don't know what the word jihad means. Mm -hmm. And he's hearing that word jihad over and over and over again. And he's listening to how his parents are talking about these people that won the war and they are having a jihad against their own country again. Jihad against the simple thing as a pen. So this family is very upset. They want to know why this is happening because now their lives are at, at risk. They're, they were part of the previous government. They were working to build the country up. Yeah. So that is open Yeah, Mr. Rashad, the reason why I uh, I wanted or I I That's asked good. to read this part is because you know uh, this part of <clears throat> um, against who whom you are fighting. 
you know, jihad against whom? Against your own Afghan people. So uh, because it's so re relevant for, for the situation right now in Afghanistan, like, okay, we had the Taliban before and then the Americans, and now we have the Taliban again. So the, the question is again, like, uh, th there's again war in Afghanistan. Against whom? Why? Yes. Why we cannot just live together, you know? So, yes. um, and and then we we come to the question like, okay, there is something deep um, going on. Otherwise, because let's say if the Taliban are Afghan and you know we're all Afghan, so we should be united and now <laughs> live in a peaceful country and build for the future of young generation. But it's not happening, so it means there is something deeper. So can you please tell us, uh, what do you tell about that in your book? Uh, why, why there's no peace? Why there's still this jihad going on, let's say, internal jihad? Absolutely. So again, the word jihad that was used in this book and my, from my own personal experience, because uh, we are born uh, that part of the world, people are majority of them are born Muslim. Mm -hmm. And by that, what I mean is they were born in a family of Muslim, but uh, we, we didn't choose to be Muslim. And I'll elaborate a little bit more on that. Uh, so when someone is born Muslim, they take it for granted. Without knowing anything, we just say, okay, well, I'm Muslim and I'm done. But when you come to this country and thank God with today's technology, a lot of us actually study what Islam is, what jihad is. Me, myself, when I used to pray, I didn't know a single word what I was saying all these uh, verses that I'm reading while I'm praying, it's all in Arabic. That's, my, that's not my, my mother language. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn it in English and Farsi. And now I can understand what I'm saying while I'm doing my salah, namaz. Yeah. So and the word jihad is not a Farsi word or English word. So once I did my research, what jihad is, jihad does not always mean a war against, you know, a holy, a holy war. Or this it, Jihad could mean a struggle and strife, internal jihad. Let's say I am, uh, I, I have an issue with food. I'm eating constantly food, food, food. I'll have a jihad with myself to, to stop myself from eating that much. You know, you're, you're constantly striving, uh, struggling and striving. But to answer your question, what is going on with today? This is not jihad, my brother. Who, who are they killing? The Panjshiris, the Hazaras, they're all Muslim. So what jihad is this? You know, we don't believe that the, any of this is a jihad. If it was jihad, you know, how, why, why is one, if they claim to be Muslim, why is one Muslim killing another Muslim? And forget about jihad and Islam. If they're Afghans, why is one Afghan killing another Afghan? You guys have the power now. Let's show us what you can do. But if, you, if you're treating it again the same as that we don't belong in that country and, and you want to run this country the way you do, then that's not how it's going to work. People are going to stand against you like today's people, the resistance. They're constantly standing. Even if we can't go there and stand with them, we'll write a book. We'll open our mouths. We'll constantly be protesting. We'll go inside embassies. Even if we can't do that, we'll keep, we're, we're blessed that we live in a day and age that we are uh, with technology. I see so many Alhamdulillah, thank God, I see so many young people, whether Afghan or non-Afghans, you know, Tajiks, Iranis, I see so many forces of on, I see so many Americans, I see so many people posting about what's going on in Afghanistan. Back in the day, the world media was the only uh, way that they controlled people. Nowadays, everyone has that advantage on their hand. So I see a lot of people trying to, you know, wear, uh, what do you call it? Uh, raise awareness and that's what we're trying to do that is the biggest thing with this book i want to do is to uh, raise awareness that you know what is going on is not us those people that claim to be doing jihad is not us and thank you so much for that of course to bring this awareness and i'm sure that many people uh, who will uh, watch this uh, video afterwards uh, they will try to um, buy the book because for the amount of money you pay you will get a very richness in return. So I will share uh, afterwards how you can get this book. Uh, but can you tell me, Mr. Rashad, please, about the difficulties you have faced? Uh, because I'm sure writing a book is not just something. So please tell me about that. And how, uh, what is your advice for other young people uh, if they, they want to uh, start with writing a book? So 
some advice and, and first of all, the difficulties you have faced? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, growing up, you know, coming to a, a different country and growing up in a scarce mentality where you are living in a third world nation, you, you're meant, no matter how much money you gain, you're still poor in the head. We were living in a, in a war-torn country that we were worried about our meal, the next, our next meal, not even our next day's meal, our next meal. Mm-hmm. So our minds were already corrupted. It was damaged. It was so poor. We came to America. The first thing I did was after my schools, you know, I was thinking, what can I, what major can I choose so I can find the most money? Mm-hmm. I'm living in America, the richest country, uh, you know, there is, and I'm still poor in the head, trying to find a job or trying to go to uh, a college and choose a major that pays me the most. So I ended up doing logistics supply chain management with, with minor in IT, which is nothing about writing a book or anything, you know? Yes. But it's, I'm sorry. It's a complete, completely different world. Completely opposite. <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. So, but, but as time went on, the passion inside of me was always there. The stories that my mother would tell me, the, 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 the legends that we have, such as Sorab uh, and Rastam from Sean uh, Mifir uh, such as Maulana's poetry, such as all these stuff and such as my own memories, they were all in me. And it was just bothering me that, look, every time 9-11 happens, every time I go to a place where, you know, People haven't seen brown people. People, people haven't seen Middle Eastern people. I still get that look, you know. So I, I, I that's what pushed me to write this. And like I said, uh, my mindset is thinking in Farsi, but I write in English because, like, I've I grown up here, so I don't know how to write in Farsi. And my I Farsi don't is not- that feeling. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a struggle, but I pray and I try to learn as much as I can. So I, I put about eight years of hard work into this and uh, with a lot of research, research for the, what do you call it? There's a lot of historical stuff in here from the start of that land, such as how that land, you know, got its name. Before that, what was Afghanistan called? Khorasan. Before that, what was it called? Baryana. Where are all are these Baryani people from? Where did they come from? Who is Khoroshi Kabir, or in America, as they call in English, as they call it, Cyrus the Great? Uh huh. So just to to make it clear, there's your personal experience in this book, and also some historical background. Is there- yes, yes. I wanted to educate. Uh, I wanted to put as much as I can in this book, so it's not just the intimate, very close experience of a family of a four-year-old boy going to his life to Afghanistan during Taliban times. I wanted to make sure that the people who are reading this get to find out about that country. Why is that country called the Graveyards of Empire? Why did uh, uh, Alexander the Great, Genghis Khan, uh, Russians, the, uh, before the, uh, the Russians, the Red, uh, what do you call it, the English? Yeah, why did all of these got defeated? I wanted to put that in here. So, it, like I said, it took me about eight years and a lot of research. But in between that, I was also doing my own things, such as, you know, I was uh, working in my major in IT, and then I opened my own business, my family business, and all that stuff. So we were doing all of that, but still, I was slowly writing as much as I can and before even doing this, I started reading as much as I can uh, about, you know, how to write a book. I started reading about my people. I started reading about my culture. I started uh, reading about their history. So I took all of that in and I poured it into this book. So as I, as I um, hear you talking, Mr. Rashad, it's like kind of self-discovery. It's like you're going after your own identity, try to find out who you are and, and what, what just happened, you know? Um, Absolutely. Maybe, maybe that's the part you have followed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But like I said, deep inside, whether it's writing a book, singing a song, writing poetry, all of these are arts. And majority of people from that, those countries are blessed that, you know, we grew up listening to 
music that were poems of Maulana, Sadi, Alfez, all of these guys. So deep inside of us, we're all artistic people. It's just sadly for the past 40 years, there's no Maulana coming from Romy, as they call it in the Western world. There's no Romy coming from uh, that part of the world. There's no Hafez, Sadi, none of that. The world have pushed our talent down that we are, that country looks so scary and ugly, but that country used to be the center of civilization. That's where people, that's where Islam got its golden age from. Yeah. So, and Mr. So, Rishar, yeah. who had the most influence on you uh, while writing this book, your mom or your dad? Uh, um, it's no one else in the family. Yeah, so I grew up, and when I grew up in America, I, I grew up without a dad. So I would say definitely my mom. My mom constantly, you know, encouraged us, whatever it is, do it, whether it's writing a book, whether it's music. I, I sometimes sing a little bit here, there too, you know, with family, play the harmonia and those stuff. So they always encouraged us, but at this, like I told you before, at the same time, our own goal was to find a job with the most money because we're still poor, we're still poor, even though, like I said, we live uh, outside of that country. But yeah, I would definitely say my mom and the world. The world encouraged me. The more hate I got from the world for being someone from Middle East, for being a brown person, the more I pushed myself, the more I pushed myself to show the world that no, we're not ugly people. We're definitely not what you guys paint us to be. Let me, let me take my own brush and paint you a picture of what I see. Let me show you the mirror that I see myself. I see myself as offsprings of Cyrus the Great, Romy, of this. Those are my great, great, great grandfathers. I need you guys to see those. Don't look at these Taliban and look at us as 9-11 terrorists. So that's what motivated me and pushed me to write this. There, there's another um, reason why I, I really um like this initi initiative you took uh i mean the reason why you wrote this book is that uh, mostly when we hear about afghans about afghanistan let's say in general um we get the information and the knowledge from uh, let's say outsiders if i may express myself this way like uh, mainly they are the western uh, people writing about afghanistan because of uh, this 40 years of war in the country. So it was really difficult for people to, to really come up for themselves and, and, and do something when it comes to culture and literature. So um, another thing why I, I love about this initiative is that it's you, you as Afghan, you're writing your own experience about yourself, about your con country and about your own experience. And that's what makes this book so valuable to me because it, it's coming directly from the person who, who were in the ground, let's say. Uh, you felt it with your entire body, you know, if I may say so. So that's why I really appreciate this step you took. And uh, as I said, I'm going to share this around to all my friends through my social network so they can just uh, click on the link and buy it. Uh, by the way, maybe I just should uh, direct people to, to the website where they can buy this. So. Absolutely. Robin John, just, uh, just so I can say another point. Yes. Again, the, the point of this book for me is raise awareness to show the world. And uh, it, it's not for me to you know, gain uh, fortune or gain fame or this or that. No, I understand. Show the world, show the world. If someone says, oh, where are you from? Afghanistan, what's going on there? Go read this book, it will tell you what's going on. Oh, you're from Afghanistan, you must be a talent. No, go read this book, it will tell you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of young people in, in America that I associate with Afghans that have read it, they are, they are very happy. They're like, we needed a voice of our own, just like you said. This is not being written by a outsider. This is our own people. This is your book. This is Marwa Jonas book. This is anybody that is from that country or anybody that is a brown person that have went through the struggles. This is their book. This is their answer. Well, I'm, well. I'm going to point out, Mr. Rashad, because I really encourage young uh, Afghans to read books 
the information you find in a book and the magic a book can have, the impact a book can have, uh, it's, it's just enormous. For example, myself, uh, as you said, when we came from Afghanistan, you're completely in a different world. You, you, your brain is not functioning, you know, because j just you had some other um, uh, responsibilities and some other concerns in your head. But then you come here and suddenly in such an um, advanced system, let's say, and you're lost, mm -hmm. not, not just culturally. I mean, you're completely lost. And I know the first days at, at school, how difficult it was in the first time when I, I start to read a book. I mean, literally, uh, I, I just couldn't, couldn't hold on for one hour, you know. Uh, and now reading a book is I I, I don't count the pages anymore. Let me tell you, I just read the book and it doesn't take long. So uh, the reason is because um, it it opened a different world for me. It's like there is a kind of hidden world you you can discover only when you read books, which I have experienced personally. So let me let me uh, point out this. Let me. Uh, show people so uh, friends here on on Amazon you can find the book uh, Captive in Kabul uh, written by Mr. Rashad and you just can go buy and as you can see um, and and it's not that expensive thank you for that <laughs> because sometimes people are scared for, for the price but I mean it's nothing for the knowledge uh, is um, captured here and as you said, it took you eight years to finish this book. And it's yes, a sir. whole life experience. Right? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So here you go, people. I will share the link also in the comments so people can just click on it and go buy it. I will definitely do myself. Or maybe you can send me one. What's your signature? <laughs> With the auto. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, feel honored honestly so uh i will go here further with my uh, companions mr samir and uh, khanum marwa so sorry that uh, we were in the in the conversation <laughs> but now um so you you saw um mr rashad speaking about about the book about his personal experience erica so you guys also um came as as uh, asylum seeker to belgium so what was the experience for you uh, after the Taliban coming in Afghanistan and then the American invasion? Can you please tell me a bit about that? Uh, first of all, it was very, very amazing, the experiences of uh, Mr. Rashad. Thank you very much for your uh, priceless speech. And uh, about the book, uh, uh, I uh, just uh, took a little bit in the website. Uh, my daughter wanted to read it in French. I don't know if we can uh, find in French that, that translation or not. <laughs> but uh, well, we Sorry, Marwa John, we don't have it yet. But if you can help translate it, I will be happy to, All right. you know. <laughs> you should talk about that. You should talk about that okay. because we know uh, friends here in Brussels. Uh, they are really good at that. And, and Marwa, she's also <laughs> French speaking here in Belgium. Uh, so maybe we should find ways to translate the book in different of languages. Of course. Yeah. More accessible. It will, it will be very good uh, for the people of uh, France and also Belgium and Canada. Swiss, uh, everybody can uh, read it, of course. It is a very, very good book. Uh, and uh, about how our experiences uh, in Afghanistan when the Taliban came uh, for uh, some time, uh, we were in Afghanistan, in Kabul. Uh, because of this, uh, I wanted for this uh, time of the Taliban, I wanted to do something because I had a very bad experience with the Taliban regime. Uh, we couldn't go out uh, alone without the man and we had to put burqa. I was very young. I didn't want to put burqa and every time when I was going out, uh, one Taleb was out of me running <laughs> to beat me with uh, something, uh, why you don't uh, wear burqa and uh, has a kid 
I was just r- running, <laughs> escaping from him that uh, he cannot uh, catch me and beat me. So I had a very ex- bad experience with the Taliban. Uh, just, just sorry for the interrupting. Uh, just to give a context here, uh, Hanum Marwa, she is, she is a very revolutionary woman. And I can guarantee you, no authority <laughs> can, can bring order for her. So I can understand when she's speaking about the Taliban and I can, I can really imagine in my head how, how she was uh, in opposition with that. So um, yeah, I, I really appreciate her and I really wish that, um, I, I really wish to see more Afghan women around the world to stand up just like her. You saw Mr. Rashad, she was one of us at the embassy and as you know, uh, it is, it's a lot of risk. And she just put it there and she said, I'm in from the first moment. So I really wish to see more Afghan women standing up for themselves so we can really make a change. So, Khan uh, Marwad, uh, in one way, I'm not uh, someone a special or a revolutionary person, but the uh, when today I was thinking very much, why should I do something that it's not in law? But we have to think, sometimes we have to do the things that it is not in the law of our government. Like we, we went to the embassy, but we didn't have any other way to raise our rights. But we, I don't think that we, ha- uh, we did something wrong, but we did something very right. But it was out of law. <laughs> yes, sometimes we have to break the law to achieve something. We did r- raise your, our prices for our country, and it is not something very bad. So, but the the way that we live, of course, we have the limits that we cannot pass our limits. Mm-hmm. I'm also going to congratulate Mr. Rashad for this brilliant uh, initiative that uh, he invited uh, his experience in the, in the letters for uh, a community. Every, every Afghan living outside Afghanistan could be a wise to the world. Mm-hmm. If, we can, if we can do something by music, we have to do. If we can write something, it is the time to write. And if we have to break the law and enter an embassy, it is the time we have to do this. And uh, we will do it for our country because we are coming from there. We have to sh- show the world what is happening right now in Afghanistan. Exactly. And Mr. Rashad, how, how uh, was the reaction of, let's say, our... Um, Afghan Americans uh, about this embassy uh, thing. So how did they react on this? Uh, to be honest with you, so more awareness needs to be put on it because based on what most people have saw at the beginning, uh, they thought there were a couple of uneducated people that went in there and did bad things. Exactly. But uh, as I thought... So there. Absolutely. So since speaking with you guys and all that, it is totally the opposite. And and we need to put more awareness of exactly who these people were that went inside the embassy. Are they really uneducated people? Uh, Why did they do it? What was their motive and all that? And you guys have explained that. And we can definitely see that there is no one educated amongst you guys. You guys have all, you know, and went to this uh, with, with a mindset that the intellect will choose to, you know? No one is literally talking about Afghanistan. And this Afghanistan issue is going to go for, what, another week, two? The world is going to close that chapter and pick another chapter. So we have to constantly keep raising our voices, even if it means going into the embassy, you know, because the ambassador himself is not doing anything. And he's supposed be representing us in wherever uh, we live, you know? So no, I think you guys, what you guys did is definitely, thank God, good. But uh, we just need to put more stories of who these people or who these, who those heroes were that did this kind of act. 
Well, exactly. As I said, thanks to our ambassador. Uh, by the way, he's he's so active since the action. <laughs> since we did that action, now he became so active. Now he's he's posting online and so many things are happening. So that's one of the good things. <laughs> I mean, good results. But um, well, of course, it was very quick, Mr. Rashad. The idea was not to just enter the embassy and just come out with the police. Uh, first of all, we didn't expect the police to come in, which was which was illegal to do so. Uh, so that that changed the entire game. Our idea was basically to come and shout out for for Afghans and for for the right of Afghans, uh, and then also invite our Afghans at the embassy, their own embassy, to come and um, yeah bring more awareness. As you said, you know, like we were literally planning to invite. Uh, let's say writers like you, uh, other artists, you know, musicians and, and poetry artists, invite them, talk for themselves at the embassy, which the embassy never <laughs> did, you know, it, uh-huh. it's never done. So that was, th- th- that's, if you look, it's a very democratic uh, idea mm-hmm. and, and movement uh, for sure. But of course the police came in and then we were arrested but that's okay. Still, we had that. Uh, I mean, the, the news went like a shock around the world. So still, we are happy. We will continue to uh, do our actions. And also our Afghans in America, um, they also can join. They also can uh, come and follow our Facebook page called We Democratic People of Afghanistan. Uh, and I will also uh, share a link of your book, um, Captive in Kabul, Mr. Rashad, so people can just click uh, to go and buy it. There was a question, by the way, um, someone asking how we can read the book and how we can buy it. So uh, we will share the link further. They can just go on. Is it only available on Amazon or they can find somewhere else? Uh, so, Virginia? Uh, yeah, at the moment it is on Amazon and Goodread and on the website and the, the main post of the book because we had to rush it. Like I said, we were planning to release it five to eight months from now. Working, we were working with the publisher and trying to work with a couple more. But since push came to shove, <laughs> we, we did what we had to in Amazon was the quickest, most efficient way to get this out. And I felt like uh, that was needed at that time. So yes, at the moment, it's mostly on Amazon. Yes. Um, so, Mr. Rashad, something else. I also saw uh, your interviews uh, after writing this book. There was lots of uh, awareness. You were uh, interviewed by uh, Indian television, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and you were also uh, invited for a speech with the um, congressman in America. Can you t- talk a bit about that? Yes. Uh, I did a few interviews with the Indian channels, such as the regular India and the Sikh community. Uh, we also went with uh, other meetings uh, with uh, uh, for, for the people of Iran and all that, and their oppressions and all that. So what, uh, what the, on that meeting, we were promised to speak with the uh, members of the but uh, what, what ended up happening was due to time limit, it, it, it wasn't uh, available to speak with them. But later we did get to speak with them. Uh, and like I said, we sp- uh, that day we spoke with a Sikh community who had a big following, who is literally the heart of India. And, and you can see from their reaction, the Indian community is with Afghanistan. The oh, yeah. Indian community is definitely burning inside seeing us suffer. There are a lot of good people out there that are with us. Yes, I have seen that. Uh, and I'm so happy for that because, uh, you know, um, our neighbors like uh, Pakistan, we see the way they attacked on uh, Panjshir, uh, which was completely a war crime. And in the other side, we see Iran also uh, having their influence at the borders in Afghanistan. So, and, and the other side, we have India, which is a completely different culture, you know, uh, and they are so supportive. I mean, the Indian media, uh, they were so... So uh, anti-Taliban, when the Taliban entered Afghanistan and they brought a lot of awareness for us. So we should be thankful for that. And, um, and, and also thankful for 
the fact that they have invited you to give the voice. You know, after all, we all want to to bring awareness about the current situation. So people here, uh, you can find, uh, you can see uh, the Facebook page of uh, Mr. Rashad uh, Harbob Sangi, and you can just go, um, well, uh, like him, follow him, share your um, opinion. If you have questions personally, you can ask him. I, I think he would be happy to, to answer uh, that. So, uh, voila, people, I think... Uh, uh, here we are going to end uh, this uh, conversation. So I'm really happy and grateful that you um, accepted our invitation, Mr. Rashad. Um, and uh, we keep bringing awareness. We also should talk about your book, how, how we can manage that to translate in different languages. Because as you know, in Europe, English is international everywhere, but in Europe, French, uh, German, uh, or even Spanish, uh, Italiano mm -hmm. or languages uh, which are really uh, popular, you know. So uh, maybe we can get uh, at the European level more support for the translation. Uh, let's see about that. So thank you very much. I will keep in touch. Uh, and I would like to have um, a book with the autograph. Uh, definitely. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Uh, uh, Robin yes. John, I would like to end it with this my team have worked honestly day and night and as you can see myself i am sleepless <laughs> but that doesn't mean anything i don't mind losing sleep uh sweat and tear and blood for my country and my people and what's right we have been uh, non-stop writing about five to six hundred letters to members of congress and senate and uh, i've gotten some response the other day, I had an interview with a congressman of Virginia itself, and we heard some positive news, which I will share that video with you guys on my Facebook and Instagram. We heard some positive news that there are people in higher levels that are willing to help us. They are going to be on the right side of the history, which is the resistance and the people who are asking for democracy, who are asking for a better tomorrow for that country. So we shouldn't lose hope, uh, what do you call it? We shouldn't lose hope. There are good people out there. Thank you. Thank you very much. And yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, people who have been listening to this uh, conversation, but also people afterwards, they, um, they can just contact us. You know, we are just <laughs> regular people. Uh, we have our daily <laughs> life. Uh, so you just can contact us, send a message. It doesn't matter on, on Messenger, Facebook, anywhere, WhatsApp. Uh, we will be happy to hear from you and, and to bring all the voices together to, to make a difference, you know. And the thing is, uh, Mr. Rashad, I see that because of this 40 years of war, that the young generation really lost hope. That's what I'm seeing. And we should really do things to, to bring that hope back, to, to tell them, like, you can make a difference, you know, even if it's something very small, but step by step, it's going to change something, you know, it's, it's not pointless. So let's, let's do something instead of just having, um, let's say, negative comments and, you know, and walking around hopeless because that's not going to solve anything. No one is going to come and do it for us. So uh, let's come up for ourselves uh, and, and get in touch with uh, Mr. Rashad, but also with us. Um, we, um, Mr. Samir and uh, Hanum Marwa, we are always um, on, on the page. Uh, we Democratic People of Afghanistan on Facebook. So uh, please try to connect us. Uh, we, we want to be in touch with you. So um, we don't know, you know, we are just doing our best. And I believe trying is all we have. So we should try. And who knows, one day Afghanistan will be free. You know, at least yeah. we can start somewhere. And, and this is, let's say, um, this is the beginning. <laughs> so yeah. thank you. Mr. Samir, if you would like to say something. No, no thank you very much, uh, Mr. Amin. Uh, we just have someone to want to talk. Some words. Oh, <laughs> تشکر سلام برام اگه بسیار زت میبخشید من پشت نتونستم گپ زدم چون درای میکنه و یک نفر جام نشد و من در میوت نبودم در این درایو یگان اگر شما شد داشت صدای درایو چیزا سر سرم مشغول بود نفهمیدم میت کنم حالا 
باید میخواستیم سلام بگویم و ما کتاب خانه به اندازه ازش لذت بردیم و امین یک کتاب که در میخوانم این کتاب به صاف نشان میده که زندگی یک فامیل چه قسم پایان میره و چه قسم بلند میره و از این که ما شما یک خوب میداشته باشیم یا امید میداشته باشیم به با امید خداوند میشه و تن ما و خیر روز آزاد شود از اون خاطر من صرف یک دو کلمه رو میخواستیم بگویم که از این کتاب ما شما میتونیم که خوب خود از دست نتیم یا امید خود از دست نتیم تا جوان ها هم اگه باز به میرا بجنگیم تا وطن خود رو دوباره آزاد کنیم و چون حال فعلا آمده بین سویت است سا غال مغال است نمیخوام نوزایم گروپ چت شوام یک بقیم کلمه رو میخواستیم بگم روز خوش برای همتون موفق باشین استاپ نکنیم گذره رو در قابل عزیز آلما در جای ما شما باید دست صدای خدا بلند کنیم تا خمیل دانیم روز خوش بر همگی Definitely, this book could be, could be a, a reference for those people who is asking about our culture, our people, dearest, the people like us that we do not want to be under the some regime who is uh, uh, eliminating our culture, our, our uh, everything, life. Women cannot uh, go out. What is this will? In which era we live right now? And uh, yes, uh, we congratulate you, uh, Mr. Richard. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And also, uh, Mr. Richard, just prepare yourself for sleep first enough. <laughs> so the orders are going to come. So you need to sign a lot. <laughs> we all need to yeah. yeah. So thank you very much. And also people in America, Uh, they also can reach us out and uh, and bring their voice out. So we are always here and we would be more than happy to hear from them. So Mr. Rishad, thank you so much for your time and thank you so much for all the efforts you have put uh, in this book. Uh, and, and I'm so excited to, to read this as soon as possible, but not without your autograph. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, John. Thank you guys for It was a pleasure. Thank you. It was a pleasure, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.